Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the MOOC in Tractomics course. In today's lecture, we will talk about applications of cell free protein microarrays. In previous lectures, we have discussed on how different type of cell free systems could be employed to generate protein microarrays. We discussed different type of approaches including protein in situ arrays, PISA, nucleic acid programmable protein arrays. NAPA, multiple spotting technique, MIST, halotag arrays as well as DNA arrays to protein arrays or DAPA. In general, protein microarray technology allows the identification of protein interactors and binding partners in a very high throughput manner. With recent advances in protein microarray technologies, researchers have found unique opportunities to search for novel biomarkers in several diseases. In general, protein microarray technology allows the identification of protein interactors and binding partners in a high throughput manner. In today's lecture, we will start with an overview of protein microarray experiment. I will then describe few applications very briefly by discussing some relevant case studies. This will provide you an overview of how these platforms could be used for wide variety of applications including biomarker screening in this lecture. Let us first start with an overview of protein microarray experiment. Regardless of application that one wants to achieve using protein microarrays, there are certain key steps the protocol and workflow has to be followed while performing these assays. Now, based on whether you have a cell based or a cell free platform, you will need to perform some basic steps in microarray experiment. But if you are using cell free based protein microarray experiment, you have to perform certain additional experimental steps to achieve the protein expression on the chip. These additional steps involve synthesis of proteins on chip. Thereafter, all these steps regardless of whether it is cell based or cell free, it remains the same. Let me provide you an overview of various steps involved in performing a protein microarray based experiment in the following animation. So, let me give you an overview of various steps involved in performing a protein microarray experiment. I will show you how human proteome chips can be used for screening the biomarkers by using human serum. Now, as I mentioned same overview same steps can be performed for various type of applications. So, these chips have to be stored uh, precisely at minus 80 degrees, you do not want to lose the protein activity if it is a purified protein array. If you are doing cell free expression based protein microarrays, then you do not have to worry. You can store the chips even on the room temperature. So, there is only one difference between the cell free expression based protein microarrays and the cell based protein expression uh, microarrays. In the cell free expression one, you have to add the in vitro transcription and translation machinery to synthesize the protein and then whole assay can be performed in the chip. In the protein microarray cell based system, the purified proteins are printed on the chip and those are stored at the minus 80 degrees. As you can see in the 
3D animation, very carefully the slides were removed from the minus 80 freezer. And now, one need to thaw those slides very gently, so that avoid any diffusion type of effect. The typical laboratory setup, where you do not require very fancy setup here, because similar to the western blot, all these steps can be performed. After removing the chips from the minus 80 freezer or synthesizing the proteins by using self free expression based system, first of all you would like to block the those areas which do not have the spot features. So, to avoid uh, non specific binding, first of all one need to add a blocking solution. Blocking can be performed by using milk, it can be performed by using BSA, super block as well as scientists prefer a cocktail of different uh, reagents which could be used for the blocking solution. Now, typically a blocking can be performed at the room temperature for an hour on a rocking shaker or it can be performed at 4 degrees overnight in the cold condition. A small pipette tip box even can be used for this purpose, where you can add the super block or the blocking solution and then immerse the slide. One need to ensure the proper shaking while performing the blocking experiment. We do not want the milk or the blocking reagents should be uh, dried or it can be immersed on the chip surface. So, it has to be very uniform and gentle shaking. After blocking step is completed, remove the slide from the blocking solution and tap against a paper towel, so that one can remove the excess milk. So, as I mentioned, one need to ensure that there is continuous mixing of the slide, because if it is left sitting on the uh, rocker without mixing, then slide will dry and it will appear dark when you are scanning for the uh, different type of features. Now, in a typical micro experiment, uh, as I mentioned regardless of your application, one need to perform certain set of steps which are quite generic and then depending upon the requirement one can make changes and optimize the conditions for those experiments. So, typical experiment include a primary antibody, where one can use anti query proteins if you are looking for the protein protein interaction or one can add the patient serum, which we are going to show you in this one for the immune response detection. And then a marker linked secondary antibody, which is usually the HRP conjugated anti mouse IgG or Psi 3 Psi 5 conjugated anti human IgG, can be used for signal detection.
So, now once the blocking is completed, one can apply the primary antibody as I mentioned, it can be a primary antibody or it can be serum if you are looking for the immune response detection. Now, one need to ensure the right dilution because most of the time the serum gives very high background on the chip surface. So, appropriate dilutions can be optimized based on the requirements. Often these conditions are quite similar to the one uses for the western blots. Once you are ready with the appropriate dilution of the serum, then you can apply those on the chip surface and place the cover sip for an hour. Similarly, you can add the primary antibody and then uh, place the cover slip. As I am mentioning, these uh, are generic steps which could be used for variety of applications. So, once the primary antibody or the serum is placed on the chip surface, then one need to incubate for at least an hour. And again, there are different uh, scientists try different type of approaches. Few people prefer using overnight incubation condition at 4 degrees and some groups prefer using a uh, 1 hour at room temperature. A different school of thoughts here. One is that if you are allowing uh, serum for long time, it is possible that it is going to give enough time for uh, identifying the right targets. On the other hand, if you are allowing it very long, for example, overnight incubation, it is possible that background will become very high. So, people try different type of conditions in the labs and then they apply serum or primary antibody and then adjust the times for the incubation accordingly. Once the primary antibody uh, incubation is done, then you need to do the washing with the PBS twin. The washing steps are very important in a uh, micro experiment. One need to do uh, at least three or more washing with PBS and PBS twin, uh, just so that uh, you are removing all the bound antibodies on the non-specific uh, array surface. If your washing steps are not very meticulous in the micro experiment, at the end you will see very high background and you will see many non-specific binding, which will interfere with the signal detection. Now, after washing a step, apply the secondary antibody, for example, anti-human IgG and again appropriate dilutions can be selected depending upon uh, what dilution works best uh, in your experimental setup. After addition of a secondary antibody, the chip can be incubated for an hour. You need to place the cover slip 
to avoid any dust or any other particles on the chip surface. So there are different uh, investigators use different strategies for identifying the signals. For example, your secondary antibody could be conjugated with the HRP based systems. If that is the case, then one can use uh, even a tyramide signal amplification system. So, TSA reagent is a tyramide molecule which is linked to a label it could be psi 3 or psi 5 which is activated by the hot radish peroxidase and forms the free radicals. As the reaction continues, the label molecule continues to accumulate and therefore, one can see the good signal by using this TSA based detection system. Now, when you are in Q adding the secondary antibody, one can also use uh, psi 3 or psi 5 conjugated antibodies and those could be directly detected. After secondary antibody, then one need to wash the arrays again. with PBS tween 3 times similar to what we performed in the uh, last step. After washing a strip, it is important to remove uh, any liquid which is adhered on the chip surface. One can use a centrifuge to remove this liquid or one can use compressed air to the dry the slides. Now, you have to ensure the right type of rotors while you are uh, centrifuging the chips by using centrifuge. Now, once the drying process is completed, the chips can be scanned by using scanners and selecting the appropriate wavelength. This just gives you an overview of different steps involved in a protein micro experiment. Addition of a primary antibody, addition of a protein for testing the interactions or addition of serum for looking the immune response. Different type of samples can be applied then washing steps are required. After that appropriate secondary antibodies can be used and suitable detection strategies are applied for signal detection. After appropriate washing steps and drying slides can be scanned and then this data can be further analyzed. Let us now look at some applications of cell free based protein microarrays focusing on biomarker identification. Biomarker discovery for the disease detection and pre screening has been one of the major focus of researchers in proteomics field. Biomarkers have potential to allow early disease detection as well as accurate diagnosis of 
the grade of the disease. These molecular signatures can also be used to follow up a disease response, survival of patients as well as monitoring various drug treatments. As you know there is need for early detection of disease and therapy for diseases such as cancer. However, the discovery of a specific and sensitive markers remains challenging. Researchers have employed different type of technologies including protein microarrays based system to identify biomarkers which could be used for early disease detection as well as accurate detection which could be employed in many applications. Protein microarrays have greatly enhanced the biomarker discovery process because they allow high throughput platform for simultaneous and rapid screening of thousands of proteins. Many times the clinical samples are a limiting factor because we do not have large amount of clinical samples to perform an assay. Protein microarrays are helpful in this regard because even with few microliter samples one could screen thousands of proteins simultaneously by using these high density array platforms. So, biomarkers have potential for early identification of disease state, monitoring a disease treatment response as well as follow up on the disease prognosis. Let us look at how cell free expression based microarrays have been applied for screening of biomarkers. Let us discuss our first case study for this lecture which is detection of p53 autoantibodies in human serum using cell free expression based Napa microarrays. This study was performed by Anderson et al. Antibodies to several tumor antigens are identified in the breast cancer patients. However, there is very little knowledge about the specificity and the clinical significance of antibody immune repertoire in the breast cancer patients. Anderson et al adapted a specific detection of autoantibodies in breast cancer patients by using nucleic acid programmable protein arrays. This slide provides an overview of detection of p53 autoantibodies using Napa microarray approach. So, let us discuss this study in following animation. Biomarker identification in this animation we will discuss about detection of p53 autoantibodies in human serum using cell free expression based Napa microarrays study by Anderson et al 2008. In this study author generated protein microarrays based on Napa expression. As you can see in the Napa chemistry cDNA, BS3, BSA and capture antibody these four features are printed on the chip surface as a master mix. After addition of the cell free lysate proteins are expressed which can be then further probed with the diluted sera of breast cancer patients which contain p53 autoantibodies. In this study detection was carried out by means of HRP linked anti human IgG. The study detected p53 autoantibodies by means of Napa microarrays which was further confirmed by ELISA approach. As you can see the spots are visible in the p53 positive sera which are absent in the p53 negative sera. The p53 levels were found to be directly related to tumoral burden with serum antibody concentrations decreasing after new adjuvant chemotherapy.
Let us now talk about another case study for the biomarker screening. A bead based assay for multiplex detection of antibodies to EBNA 1 and P53, a study performed by Wong et al. Authors used a luminex suspension bead array platform for the rapid detection of antibodies in the sera. A programmable multiplexed immunoassay was used for the rapid monitoring of humoral immunity. As this slide shows the overview of the steps performed in this experiment, the authors demonstrated that this method could be used for rapid conversion of open reading frame ORF eom derived cDNAs to a multiplexed bead based ELISA assay. This platform could be used for detection of antibody immunity in infectious diseases as well as for the tumor antigen identification. Let us see the steps involved in this experiment in following animation. We will now look at other application rapid bead based assay for multiplex detection of antibodies to EBNA1 and P53 study by Wong et al 2009. In this study, authors developed a programmable multiplexed immunoassay where tagged antigens were expressed by using in vitro transcription and translation. and capture these onto the anti tag coated beads. One self expression step was completed. The synthesized proteins were further immobilized onto the beads through the capturing agents. These beads were then mixed together. After mixing the beads together, the serum was added to these coupled beads and human IgG were detected by probing with the enzyme linked anti human IgG. The colored reaction was observed on addition of substrate to the enzyme. The authors demonstrated that this approach for detection of antibodies to Epstein-Barr virus nuclear antigen 1 or EBNA1 and P53. In summary, the protein microarrays offer novel technology for the simultaneous and rapid analysis of multiple biomarkers or interactors in a very high throughput manner. Microarrays have been widely used for detection of antigens as well as antibodies in blood sample and various other clinical samples. However, the traditional cell based approaches have certain limitations. Therefore, the self free expression based 
protein microarrays have emerged to overcome several limitations and very strongly it has been shown that various applications can be performed without need to purify the protein because you can generate protein content in cell free manner. In today's lecture we went through the overview of protein microarray protocol. We also discussed few case studies where researchers have used cell free expression based microarray platform for biomarker discovery. However, there are much more applications to this technology beyond biomarker identification studies. We shall look at more examples in the following lecture. Thank you.